as we mark the beginning of a season of reflection and penitence, let us take a moment to quiet ourselves and prepare to open ourselves to God's presence. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you despise nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our brokenness, may obtain of you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God now and forever amen the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew Jesus said beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So, whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, Put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your father who is in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where th thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasure in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of Christ. Whenever you give alms, whenever you pray, whenever you fast, there is an intentionality to the language here. It doesn't say if you give alms, if you pray, or if you fast. Rather, the assumption is that we all do all of these things. Thus, the message is about how we give alms, pray, and fast. What do these acts of faith look like for our context? Giving alms in the time of Jesus meant giving back to God at least 10% of all that you had. This is the biblical tithe, which included contributions to the synagogue, but also acts of care for others. A portion of every field was to be left for those in need to harvest. Expectations were placed on how to care for outsiders and visitors. Jubilee was to be practiced, creating opportunities for greater equality. 
Sabbath was offered to the earth and to the people. All of these required a different understanding of ownership and entitlement that included a sharing of wealth. How do we share today? To what extent are we able to look beyond the promotion of scarcity, the ideals of wealth as status, and the expectations around who deserves what? In what ways can and do we give alms and promote a greater sense of equity and respect for all, regardless of their economic status? Whenever you pray, there are a multitude of practices and traditions associated with prayer. Some include expectations about what is worn, where and when prayer happens, and even what the body does. What does prayer look like for us today? How do we embody the act of prayer beyond collective worship in our church buildings? To what extent are we actively praying in secret, engaging in conversations with God, expecting to encounter God in every aspect of our lives? Whenever you fast, fasting is a part of many religions. It is believed that through fasting, through an emptying of self, people can become more aware more open to the truths of our lives and the distractions that keep us from living fully our faith. Fasting today runs countercultural to our lived reality. Most people don't like the idea of having to give up anything. We work hard for what we have. We deserve what we have. We are entitled to it. And yet, what can be learned when we intentionally choose to give something up? How can we better understand the difference between want and need? To what extent can fasting create spaces of gratitude and empathy? For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Therein, lies the heart of this message. What we treasure, our resources, our time, our priorities and expectations can distract from or enhance our relationship to God and to one another. We can discern which of these is happening through the intentional practices of almsgiving, prayer and fasting. These are the challenges of Lent, that season in the church year through which we are challenged to be intentional about our acts of faith as we prepare to engage in the mystery of that Holy Week journey. What will you do this year to explore your faith? How will you seek God in this journey? What are your hopes in regards to your own transformation? God has given us a plethora of gifts that can be used for our benefit and for God's glory. Jesus has shown us what is possible when we live in love. The Spirit continues to encourage us in new and meaningful ways. Free will enables us to choose the paths we take. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the Lord, to observe a holy Lent by self-examination, penitence, prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, and by reading and meditating on the Word of God. Let us turn to God in humility, penitence, and prayer as we sing together, Ashes.
Most holy and merciful Father, we confess to you, to one another, and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth, that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, Lord. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, Lord. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives. We confess to you, Lord, our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people. We confess to you, Lord, our anger at our own frustration and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. We confess to you, Lord, our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts and our dishonesty in daily life and work. We confess to you, Lord, our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. We confess to you, Lord. Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord, for all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts towards our neighbors and for our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us. Accept our repentance, Lord. For our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Accept our repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. In remembrance of our baptism and the ways in which the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ bring us hope, I invite you now to trace the cross of Christ on your forehead as you say, Remember, we are dust, and to dust we shall return. Accomplish in us, O God, the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord, bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Create in us a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within us.